Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is Diane. So today I'm going to talk about my career because for me, I didn't really know about the job until maybe 12th grade of high school. Let me just start off with like a brief how I found out about the type of job that I do now. So it just so happens that my mother is a medical, oh actually I guess I should introduce what I do. So I am a medical laboratory technologist here in Canada and I believe it is the same title in the states but I could be wrong. Not to be confused with a medical laboratory technician. I'm not a technician, I'm a technologist. In high school I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I didn't know what I wanted to go into. All my life I had basically been told like you know you should be a doctor, consider being a doctor, 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 doctor. And I already knew from the get-go that I didn't think that I had it in me to be a doctor. Not necessarily that I didn't think I was smart enough, but I just didn't have the drive for it. I feel like I can't, like I, I mentioned in my previous video, I just cannot see people suffer. I don't have any problem with like gore. Um, I can, like I've seen body parts and I've seen them dismembered. I've seen them opened up. I've seen you know, I've seen a lot of things, but just one thing I can't do is to like, you know, see people's ever. Anyways, high school comes around, it's time to start thinking about university applications, and I knew for sure I wanted to go to university. So in grade 12, what happened was I applied to a bunch of different universities in Ontario. So like I applied to Western for kinesiology and health sciences. I applied to University of Toronto for life sciences, like just like health science general because I didn't know what I was gonna do but I know I, I knew I wanted to do something health related. Like I got accepted to every single thing I applied for. The only thing is that I just didn't know what I wanted to do and I didn't wanna waste my time. I was about to accept one of my offers to a university but I just like, I couldn't do it. I literally could not do it. I decided to actually reject all of the offers that I got and I decided to take another year of high school to decide what it is that I really wanted to do. So at that point in my life, my mom actually brought me to work um, and she's a charge technologist. So see, she's a medical laboratory technologist, but she's like the, the charge of her department. So she brought me in to work one day and she let me see everything that was kind of going on in the laboratory. So she took me in her department um, and then showed me how everything worked and it was super interested. I was so fascinated with everything. And I think I liked the fact that it was directly related to the patient, but you don't deal with the patient face to face. She took me to the other departments. I got to see what the other departments did. And all in all, I loved the work. At that time, I knew what it is that I wanted to do now. Um, and all that I had to do was kind of just take bird courses to, you know, up my GPA so I could get into the program because there was only one program in Ontario that is medical laboratory science within four years. So typically how it works is if you want to get into the laboratory, first you need a bachelor's degree and then you go and specialize or take another, like you go to a college that specializes in medical laboratory science and you either do two straight years or three straight years. I'm not really quite sure, but I, it's like either two or three years. So in total of your education, you would be needing to spend seven years in school in order to get a job as a medical laboratory technologist but there was a brand new program that had just opened up at a pretty new university and that university is called University of Ontario Institute of Technology so they are the only university in Ontario that actually offers a degree program so what that means is in four years you can get your health science your bachelor of health science degree as well as the medical laboratory science diploma or it's an accredited program so that once you finish the four years you're able to go and write your CSMLS like your national licensing exam and you're able to start work once you pass the national exam so to me that's what I think I wanted to do because then that means after I finished my bachelor's I didn't need to go back to school for another two or three years to kind of master it's not a master but like to to be able to get a job afterwards in something that I was so interested in. So 
that's the backstory. Let me tell you a little bit about my job. So there's five different disciplines in the medical lab. There's microbiology, which is the study of you know, organisms, bacteria, fungi, that kind of stuff that can cause disease in humans and, and animals and stuff, but I think we mo mainly focus on humans in the medical lab. Histology is the study of human tissues. So the histology department will be the one to, to get anything that, if you ever get anything removed in surgery, like if you ever have a hysterectomy, your, you know, your your uterus and, and your ovaries and stuff go to the histology department and um, will be like cut up and dissected and we'll, you know, they'll check for cancer cells or anything like that. There is transfusion science or blood bank, which is the department that deals with transfusions. So if you need to get, you know, blood transfusions, if you're in a car accident and you're losing a lot of blood and you go to the hospital, um, blood bank is in charge of you know, typing your blood. What is your blood type? Do you have any antibodies? They're the ones to kind of just like type all the blood and send it out to you um, for you to be transfused. And there's other blood products that include platelets and plasma, um, albumin or anything like that. That's what blood bank deals with. Hematology is the department that deals with your blood. And well, actually, I don't want to say that because they all basically deal with your blood, but Hematology is more blood specific. So hematology will deal with things like your blood counts, like what is your red blood count? What is your white blood count? We take your blood, put it onto a slide and look at it under the microscope and we're able to tell if your red blood cells look a little abnormal, if they're too small, if they're too big, if they don't have enough hemoglobin in them and in chemistry or biochemistry is we also take your blood and analyze it and we're able to you know tell you your blood your blood levels like what is your glucose level what is your sodium level what is your potassium level you know what are your triglycerides like what what are your TSHs like? If you're pregnant, we can find out how pregnant you are um, based on your beta HCG levels so it's a lot that goes on in the laboratory. It's a lot, it's a lot, and I know this video is gonna be long, so I hope you're grabbing a snack, I hope you're sitting down, and I hope you are ready to be educated. The department that I work in is Core Lab. So Core Lab consists typically, like I don't know how it is in other hospitals, but in our Core Lab, it is hematology, transfusion science, and chemistry. I just like touched very briefly on every discipline, but maybe I'll go a little bit more in depth of what it is that I do. So I guess we can start with biochemistry. So in biochemistry, typically we will get your blood sample. I don't want to say yours, but we get, you know, blood samples. Typically we will be in charge of taking your specimen and analyzing it properly. So we usually put them in the centrifuge so that we can separate the red cells from the serum and we're able to test the serum. So once we put the sample onto the analyzer. What is important about biochemistry is that there are a lot, there's a lot of information that you can tell just by looking at somebody's chem results. Um, you can tell if the person is in metabolic acidosis. You can tell if somebody's troponin is really, really high, they're having a heart attack. So it is really important in chemistry that you know you do your job right, but also you need to be able to know and differentiate when somebody is having a critical result so you can contact that person's nurse ASAP so that the nurse can then look after that patient however it is that they look after patients when they are having heart attack. We also deal with urines and we also deal with CSFs which is cerebral spinal fluid. So we also deal with any type of miscellaneous fluid that you would get extracted from your body if necessary. Like if you have pleural fluid, if you have synovial fluid, you can analyze um, CSFs for protein and glucose to determine if you have if you have an infection and if you do have an infection is it bacterial or is it viral etc <laughs> and a lot of the job actually is your analyzer maintenance it is very important that you make sure that your analyzer is working properly that your QC passes it's just a whirlwind of troubleshooting sometimes and it really like it gets your brain thinking and it's a very fulfilling job because not every day is the same day. Sometimes you have a really relaxing day and sometimes you know you get three baby CSFs and then you, your analyzer breaks down and your QC doesn't work and your, your bench partner goes on break and suddenly it's like Pfft. 
So I don't want this video to get too long, but hopefully that kind of tells you about what I do in chemistry. Hematology is very much the same. We get the sample, we analyze it, and we look at the CBC results. So we look at the hemoglobin. Is your hemoglobin okay? If it's not, like if your hemoglobin is low, then we would go to blood bank and say, hi, Mr. So-and-so's hemoglobin is critically low you should be watching out for a blood order for this person because he's gonna need more red blood cells because if your hemoglobin is low, that means you need more red blood cells. So it all kind of ties in together really nicely. Um, so yeah, hematology, we look for, you know, critical stuff like that. What is your red count? What is your white blood cell count? If your white blood cell count is really high, why is it really high? If, you know, we see a bunch of target red blood cells and there's a lot of cells that are fragmented and there's a lot of odd looking red blood cells. Did this person have a splenectomy? Does this person have a thalassemia? So there's a lot that goes on with hematology in accordance to your blood specifically. Chemistry is about how your whole body is doing, like the analytes in your body working, like is everything functioning properly? Hematology is also that but it's more specifically geared to your blood and what it is that is maybe wrong with your blood and then we go to transfusion problems that we have in blood bank that we deal with you know if mums are o negative or if they're a negative if they're a b negative if they're b negative if they're negative like if their rh is negative and they are going to give birth we need to make sure that the baby isn't rh positive because that could really harm the mother so i know that like i don't want to give you guys a lesson over here like i just want to i just want to like give a very rough description of what it is i do i take patient samples um, I analyze them and determine what their blood type is. Is this patient A positive? I'm A positive, by the way. Um, is this person O negative? Is this person B positive? So we need to know these kinds of things in case they need a transfusion so we can cross match, so we can make sure that this bag of blood is compatible with this person's blood so that once this person's blood is transfused, it goes smoothly. So what can happen if you transfuse a B positive bag of blood with somebody that's A negative, something called a hemolytic transfusion reaction will occur in which like your body will start breaking down all these cells and then all of the debris and stuff, it'll make you really, really sick inside and it can possibly kill you. Actually, I feel like it probably would if you were transfused with a lot because you would go into like a hemolytic transfusion reaction right away. So it's very dangerous to be transfused blood that isn't your blood type, especially if you have like something complicated like an antibody, which means that your body has developed an antibody against a specific antigen which can also be very damaging to a patient. So another part of my job is being able to do maintenance on any of the analyzers that need it because we do need to maintain our machines and our analyzers to make sure they're giving us the proper results. So we do run quality control, which can sometimes be like um, a made up blood sample from a manufacturer they send it to us it's supposed to be a specific result so every time we run it it has to be within the range and if it's not you need to troubleshoot because then that means there could be something wrong with your analyzer so it's su it's a super fulfilling job I love it I really do it wasn't easy to get here I'm gonna tell you that because school was hard it kicked my ass but it was definitely definitely worth it and I think I do want to talk about you know how to succeed in school how to succeed in university but I'll make a separate video on that because this one's getting quite long so yeah if there's anything that I didn't touch on if there's anything that you guys kind of want to know a little bit more um, comment down below and let me know and I will try to answer I usually do answer as many comments as I can thank you guys for watching my video and I will see you in the next one. Bye! Have I told you There's just something about you From the way you move Those sexy lips when you talk to me But there's another Little thing about you It's the 